Hey guys, what's up? This is Diego here at Cinema Getting Reviews. So, this week, the finale of Loki dropped on Disney+, Plus, which means we got the full scope of the story to talk about now, so let's be a part of the conversation. Just a heads up though, this review is not going to contain spoilers, so let's keep the comment section spoiler-free, just in case there's anybody down there who hasn't seen it. Okay, now that we have that out of the way... Lame... Uh... Wait a second, who are you? Who do you think? Well, it looks like me, except you copied Sebastian's outfit. Which, don't get me wrong, it looks better, but I'm honestly kind of biased. Well, thank you, but actually this is my outfit. At least in my timeline. Well, what does Sebastian wear? I'll give you a hint. A lot less. Oh. Look, you can't just review Loki and not make some on-the-nose joke about alternate timelines. Alright, plus this is YouTube. Okay, there are a million critics out here already. You gotta do something to shake things up. So I did you a favor. Sorry, I'm, I'm still on what you said about Sebastian earlier, but wait, does this mean that traveling between timelines is possible? Yep. How? Through the power of creative writing. Hmm. Is this too many fourth wall breaks? Or just an homage to Deadpool meets Bo Burnham? You know what, I'll, I'll just let the audience decide. Let's just get on with it. So in Avengers Endgame, while Tony Stark is stealing the Tesseract, he accidentally drops it and Loki picks it up, which allows him to escape. This series picks up immediately after that, with Loki being arrested by the Time Variance Authority, or TVA for short, and soon after he teams up with Owen Wilson to track down an alternate reality version of himself, played by Sofia DiMartino. So I was never a huge fan of the Loki character before. When the first Thor movie came out, I was like, alright, you know, he's a pretty good villain, and you do feel sorry for him, but I never really understood what the hype was all about. Over the years, I did start to like him. For example, I liked what they did with his character in Thor Ragnarok. I felt that it was a good redemption arc for him, while still keeping that mischievous nature that that he's known for, that Tom Hiddleston is so good at portraying. Just goes to show how great that movie is. And this series, though not always perfect, was also a pretty good look at the Loki character and showing the different sides of his personality. The biggest positive I had with it was it showed the vulnerable side of Loki in a way that we hadn't seen before. It's actually kind of fascinating when this show kind of becomes a reality check for him, and you get to see how the TVA showing him who he really is sort of affects him negatively. Again, it didn't hit every single bullet point of his personality, but we'll get to that in a second. Another highlight of the show was Loki's dynamic with Owen Wilson. They have a lot of really fun scenes together, and watching these two characters go back and forth is honestly hilarious. I loved every single moment they had together, and of course Owen Wilson is fantastic. I think this actually might be my favorite performance of his. Sofia DiMartino is also great. She plays an alternate reality version of Loki, as I said before, and while she was different in the overall way she played Loki, she did have some core similarities, you know, subtle little personality hints that she had in common with Tom Hiddleston, and it's these subtle little similarities that made their scene so entertaining to watch. And I haven't seen her in anything else yet, but she was great as the variant Loki, or Sylvia she likes to be called, and her chemistry with Tom Hiddleston was also fantastic. Watching the mystery of the TVA unfold and discovering how things work behind the scenes is honestly fascinating. It gets you invested in the show really, really quick and makes the episodes feel really short, which I think is always a good thing because you get to hate that really quick. It's, it's those cliffhangers at the end of every episode that just frustrate you because they always leave you wanting more. And this is one thing that Marvel's doing really, really well lately with their TV shows, and I think Loki's where they're doing it best. There are also some pretty fun surprises with this show, especially in episodes 4 and 5, which I won't spoil, but it adds so much depth to the MCU and the possibilities it could open in the future, and it honestly makes you excited for what happens next. As far as negatives, this show wasn't consistently great. The weakest episode, I think, was episode 3. It just felt like the one where we didn't find out as much about what was going on as in the other episodes. It also felt the most contained, which I felt kind of ruined the pacing a little bit. Also, I mentioned my biggest positive was the exploration of the Loki character. This is where I also feel that they came up short. There wasn't really a moment where you felt like Loki had his moment. You know what I'm saying? Like, it didn't really show his personality. It wasn't really his, like, flair, his style, his mischievous nature that we were looking to see throughout the whole show. Because the trailers kind of advertise a lot of Loki's mischievous side, but they don't focus on what the show is actually about. Other than that, I still really enjoyed Loki. I actually think I liked it more than WandaVision in terms of the concept and what it adds to the MCU. And I can't wait to see how the ending of it, which I won't spoil, plays into the future of the MCU. The show ends on a pretty big cliffhanger, and I honestly, I gasped. Like, what they're setting up here is freaking crazy. And it 
it adds so much context to why certain things in the past and past MCU movies and TV shows managed to work and, and be possible. This might be bigger than anything the MCU has done before, and it's setting up something that's even bigger than that. So I'm excited, and with that said, my rating for Loki is 9 out of 10. You should have talked spoilers, man. They held you back. What are you still doing here? Honestly, I'm bored, and annoying you is kind of fun. Listen, man, this is the second time I've been interrupted mid-review and told how to do my job. Now, will you please just leave me alone? Hey, don't blame me, man. This is your idea. Goddamn fourth wall breaks. <laughs> Listen, Diego, I'm telling you, you didn't talk enough about this show. You gotta do a spoiler review, man. This is an MCU property. Okay, there are theories, Easter eggs, there are different things they could spin off of. You can't just leave it at one review. Alright, fine. I'll do a spoiler review later, but first you gotta answer this question, and then you gotta leave me alone. Fair enough. How's your timeline different from mine? What's going on over there right now? Well, let's see. This weekend I'm planning to review Fast and Furious 125, Resident Evil 200, and... Oh, Uwe Boll has a new movie coming out. That sounds terrible. Yeah, but at least in this timeline, Trump was never president. No shit. Yeah, when his campaign started, we all just kind of collectively laughed and didn't even entertain the idea. Wow. I was gonna say, that's... I feel like that's what should have happened here. Yeah. Oh, and my first feature debuted number one at the box office. What? Later, loser. No, 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 no. <sighs> Figures. Well, anyway, guys, uh, if you've seen Loki, please let me know your thoughts are in the comments. Keep it spoiler-free, of course. Spoiler reviews coming later. Do you like the show? Do you hate it? And are you excited for what this adds to the future of the MCU? As always, be sure to like this video and subscribe and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And please support our Patreon. We really appreciate that. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Diego for Cinemageddon Reviews, and I'll see you on the Wasteland.